we have Hari with us as well. Uh, Hari has uh, been um, in the IT field for over two decades now, and he has experienced gardening for more than 10 years. He is a foodie and an extraordinary cook. He is waiting to take the leap into organic farming. Uh, thank you so much, Hari, for joining us today. Over to you, Ani. Thank you. Thank you so much, and uh, welcome for our fifth episode. Uh, and uh, it, it gives me a great pleasure to get get very good friends of mine, uh, both of them, Hari and uh, Priya. Is, I mean, Meenakshi is known as Priya in our circles. So <laughs> I may jump into saying Priya and then please don't <laughs> mistake that. So it is Meenakshi Arun and Hari Ram. And uh, they have been uh, sort of uh, icons in uh, the terrace gardening, uh, you know, scene. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, yes, you being both of you. Uh, very knowledgeable. Uh, they make uh, growing food fun. So uh, I want to start at the very beginning. You know, what what is like? Both of you have been on a journey. I mean, it continues. I'm sure for for a very long time. And uh, what is it? How did you you know connect, Hari? What is it? Your connection to you know growing food. Uh, where did it start? And can you give us a little bit of the background? Yeah, I'll, I'll just quickly touch base on this because uh, this question probably was asked many times to me. And uh, it all started when I was in the very young, you know, maybe maybe ninth standard, so where I've seen my grandmother doing some kind of a gardening, uh, in the orchard, whatever she had. And uh, it caught the interest, uh, uh, the whole thing got into my mind when I started seeing things growing in front of my eyes during the summer holidays. So that's how I was. Uh, Probably rather I was supposed to look at certain things the way I'm supposed to because uh, that's uh, grandma's order. So they just entered uh, into a different world after that, you know. Uh, then there was a large disconnect, you know. So I have seen how things grow and how uh, they are. But uh, then I started connecting that uh, when I moved to Bangalore. <clears throat> um, oh. It all started because of my Ango one. Because I mm -hmm. had this interest of growing here and there I was growing. But... Uh, a big time I wanted to, or rather decided to grow uh, only after my young one started disliking uh, palak and uh, tomato. Okay, so he, he picks it up and he says, you know, he's very selective on what he wants to eat. Okay, and uh, definitely I did not want him to answer a question some point of time in his life when somebody asks, you know, how much time it takes to come to your plate. Uh, you should not say that it is coming from the fridge and it takes only two minutes. Okay, so just wanted to give him that experience what I had gone through uh, when I was a child. So I started capturing the pictures and started doing little, you know, small time gardening with him on the terrace. And uh, that really, you know, uh, uh, helped him to get amazed, you know, the end of the end of the uh, you know, harvest. So when I show him all the pictures and how much time it takes. You know, he, he really started appreciating the whole thing that was the stake. So, so that's how that's wow. how it all started. Uh, yeah. And uh, it's almost uh, ten years now. You know, there, there are different phases I've gone through uh, yes. from a small yes. corner gardening to terrace gardening to now back to balcony gardening. So, but I've been growing food at home. Yes. You know, we don't buy greens outside, so we just grow it at home. Wow, wow! So you can see they connect. You know, if you connect the dots, it's from grandma, your grandma. To your son, you know, I mean, it is like it is going like it's traditionally being passed around the, the love for growing food. So, um, yeah. Minaksh, what is your story? I mean, what what is the connect that you made uh, to uh, this nature and uh, to about food? And uh, was it food that wanted you to? I mean, what you wanted to grow, grow, or it is growing that made you fall in love with food? So I think very similar to Hari. For I had uh, both my grandmothers were passionate about their gardens. I had very green thumbs and then uh, they had houses and they had, you know, very, uh, very green surroundings. They, anything they sowed would grow. And uh, later on, you know, when I grew up, we were always in apartments, but my mother would always maintain a little garden wherever we were. We, and for many years, we were in Dubai, even in that place, she would have a, somehow managed to protect her Tulsi at least, you know, things like that. Then when we, uh, we moved to Hyderabad, that's where I spent the majority of my school years. And, uh, you know, she always, when we, when we moved into our own house, even there, she made sure that in the balcony, she had space and she would grow anything. Uh, whatever. She so that, that uh, you know, passion was always there. 
and then i moved to bangalore and uh, you know initially it was uh, you know we we were in rented homes we didn't know so and we finally moved to our own apartment i definitely wanted to you know also get a small green space there and uh, we started with flowers we had you know the usual the, the puja flowers the tulsi and all of that then one of these uh, you know we i always used to look for fresh uh, vegetables and greens and the place we were used to have a little farm nearby uh, and you know we used to go there and you know try to buy things and also once one of my neighbors and i we had gone a little earlier and that's when i spotted that they were washing the uh, you know greens in so in literally you know dirty water so that was like a, a you know open you know eye opening moment for me because you know right in my uh, it was about 10 minutes from where we live right and right there there's somebody who says he's growing food and there's no uh, you know you just wash it in whatever water and it's that what's going into my uh, you know family's food so i was uh, completely distressed i think that day and then when i came back i started okay thinking i have the space we were in that apartment we were allowed to grow on the terrace so there was no uh, you know issues there so i immediately started looking and uh, you know online for sources uh, uh, i know where to get seeds basically and how to start and that's when i found uh, you know geek gardeners blog then and i have to say it was that's when i realized that you had abilities in bangalore to and and the inputs to get something going like that right so that was a very i think that was a transformational moment where i decided that i will not just grow my flowers and you know the ornamentals but food has to become my priority and that was about sometime in 20 2003 or 4 right right yeah yeah oh, wow uh, so, yeah i mean i think uh, everybody has a uh, reason uh, you know choose to do some uh, to do something in life uh, because they have they made a choice because of certain things that happened to them so uh, if and i'll put the question to both of you uh, for the you know general uh, people uh, people who haven't grown food why do you think they should one should want to grow food what, what is the why should they make that choice I'll let Hari go first. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think uh, uh, growing food is nature's art, according to me. okay. And uh, uh, I know gardener is just a uh, accessory to nurture how you want to do it and etc. But uh, primarily, what I I feel is that you know uh, one should go about growing food purely for own their, their own sake. Okay, there is only certain amount that we can uh, you know avoid from our A lifestyle, okay, and which is easy to grow. There are certain things you can grow at home, and it doesn't take much time to much time to grow. You know, uh, regardless of the environment, kind of environment or the space they have, they can still look at uh, you know growing food, uh, which will probably be uh, very helpful uh, you know, uh, to, to the family and to them, especially those who have uh, young children and uh, old parents. Okay, and we also. <clears throat> know that uh, you know, there is a concept of growing microgreens you know which are very highly nutritious okay and uh, i think there are multiple ways you know you can, you can look at growing food and uh, you may not become self sustained by just having a balcony but definitely there is a certain percentage of food that you can avoid buying from outside which you're not sure you know how how safe it is so i think uh, it's it's not a rocket science and yes you will fail it's okay and uh, and i think you should look at attempting it seriously and i'm sure it will become part of your life yeah and minachi so i think i fully agree and you know the the thing is it is so easy to to grow something that is you know you you know it is squeaky clean it is fresh the taste of something that is you know grown either by you or someone you can completely trust who also grew it you know safely it is is completely different so it's only when you experience that but at the same time i think you know i i recognize that you know not everyone may have the uh, you know environment in which they could uh, get to this kind of you know a complete setup you may have a very small space but i think what everybody needs to think about is even in those small spaces there are things you can already do like you know hari mentioned microgreens for example most of your greens will grow in a balcony so the thing is um, yeah. the while while there are some people who who will be able to take it up you know they could convert a terrace or they could convert a balcony space there are people who may not have access to that there are enough and more uh, you know options today because it has become such a, a movement that even if you don't have your own space you have ways of renting you have ways of you know getting in touch with a community that can you know put you in touch with farmers who are very committed to safe food so it's uh, it, there are options right which it's not i think how it was 
uh, a decade ago you know when i started i remember like uh, i don't think we even had the kind of inputs that are so freely available today yeah, yeah. so that i think that's where it is uh, you know it's it is a movement and uh, you know the faster you get become a part of that movement you will you know accelerate your own uh, sustainability that's it yeah so yeah i mean uh, i completely agree with both of you and uh, uh, by the way uh, bangalore is a leading uh, uh, you know the, it leads in the number of people that grow food on their terraces so we have a group called organic terrace gardening group uh, and this is like the most vibrant commu community that i have ever been a part of not that i have been part of many many such but then uh, that's where all the learning is i call it uh, university by itself and you both have been active members you are the admins there so how did otg start and could you uh, you know uh, minakshi uh, could you tell us about the position art sure. the pioneer the entire movement i want the listeners to understand yes. uh, what a one man's vision how how does Absolutely. it turn out to be such an amazing movement yes and it's a very apt uh, time to also share this because uh, you know it's about 25 years now since dr vishwanath first uh, he was actually landing um, uh, you know uh, by flight and he realized that you know bangalore is full of these terraces which are empty and there's such a, a opportunity for everybody to invest some time and grow their own healthy food right so uh, dr vishwanath is an, is no stranger to you know the uh, the organic gardening community of bangalore uh, people who you know have an interest in this he's been our uh, you know guru um, he's uh, uh, so he's um, his vision really was that how do you make the uh, you know urban public aware of the fact that a you are your food is compromised and two you can do something about it right because there is it is very easy to uh, you know start a little garden and then uh, you know also again coming back to the whole space constraint which most people will have dr vishi's vision is really that if you know if four people in a community grow you can share your produce so everybody you know you make best use if you if you are in if you are in an apartment you know east facing west facing south facing balconies whatever if each of you invest it's a community right and you make use of best use of your life situation you share your uh you know somebody grows the greens in you know shade yeah. someone has full sun they grow something else they you know that and it basically uh you know brings about a, also a social change right i mean along the years i think we all got so busy with our work um you know many of us have forgotten how to even you know have a normal chat with our neighbors so these are also things that you know the community of gardeners i i have felt is such a thriving positive community right there is so much of um eagerness to share knowledge make sure that everybody is successful at growing uh, there is no i mean uh, the, if, you know any comp if, if there is competition at all it is fun right and and it's it's always like uh, rewarding because you are also going to get a part of that share yes right yes. so it's uh, i, I think those are the things that uh, you know dr vishwanath has been a pioneer and uh, it is it is thanks to him uh, you know he also envisioned, envisioned the platform uh, we have uh, you know the quarterly event uta from your tota which is now going to be you know the next one will be the 36th such event it happens uh, you know every quarter of a year yeah we'll, we'll come back to that yeah, we'll right. go there we'll go there yeah. in detail but otg yeah. is really the I, i think it was a it was a changing moment right it was an mm -hmm. inflection point where this community could right. come together right. yeah right. so uh, yeah i mean that that has been such a uh, amazing uh, way to bring lot of people you know it has it, it has its own journey OTG yes. and uh, as i said such a vibrant uh, space uh, so uh, hari can you uh, uh, you know tell what is the impact of this uh, you know dr vishnath's vision uh, what, the way you see it you know what kind of impact have you seen uh, in this movement i think uh, when i moved to otg i think it was already a group of a sizable number of members and uh, a lot of experience sharing that was happening and uh, mr vishnath was uh, playing a very crucial role in the group at that point of time uh, he was uh, trying to help uh, explain people how things are uh, can be done and motivating people that it is possible and uh, started encouraging people uh, who posted just one chili on the uh, you know uh, saying that i have harvested one chili from my garden so i have seen him uh, being very kind with people and motivating and encouraging people saying that uh, this is just a journey and it is not that uh, you know ultimately you'll achieve baking but yes you have to go through this phase complete phase of it and then you start growing 
I had a lot of interactions uh, with Mr. Vishnath uh, during the OTG sessions that, uh, that was conducted, and uh, and I found uh, you know uh, him motivating regardless of whether you uh, uh, know gardening or you don't know gardening. You know his passion to talk about uh, the importance of growing food at uh, your terrace or the place that whatever you have uh, was was phenomenal. You know he can he can continue to talk the same thing because. It's like a deja vu for me, but I would love to listen to him every time whenever I used to speak to him because though he says the same thing again uh, in a different way, but it is uh, lovely to listen to him saying that it keeps you motivated continuously. I think that created a lot of ambassadors for him within the uh, uh, OTG group, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, be it you, be it uh, Priya, and uh, be it anybody. So it created some a, a group of ambassadors who could... Uh, probably uh, you know share their knowledge you know by to whichever means it is okay so when i moved into otg i think because of his motivation so i started uh, and of course my kid you know whatever i was capturing so i started putting the picture series of how things can be grown because that's one thing that was disconnecting uh, there so i was surprised when i posted my first one uh, the number of queries i got i thought there are already experts in that group you know but the moment i saw that the number of queries that were coming I thought, okay, I'm part of the beginners. You know, just that I was successful, that I was part of the beginners. Yeah. So I also understood, uh, you know, uh, the importance of sharing knowledge, uh, which Mr. Vishwanath was emphasizing uh, in uh, in many platforms. So I understood that. Then I took that as a challenge, uh, you know, and to start posting, you know, each yeah. of each type of vegetable. So whatever I was growing, the end-to-end -end cycle of it, from the seed to the, you know, harvest, I started posting. Yeah. So that way, I feel uh, Mr. Vishwanath was instrumental in creating uh, some of uh, the people who could really contribute, uh, uh, you know, towards uh, towards uh, others who can learn from it and uh, get motivated and uh, start doing. I just so want that. to in I just want to interject before we continue. Is OTG is yeah. not oven toaster grinder, guys. If you are like in the oven age. And if yeah, you are someone so. who is in my age range, you think uh, oven toaster grinder, how are we going to garden with oven toaster grinder? It's organic terrace garden, guys. Grow exactly. up, wake yes. up. Exactly. <laughs> so I, I was exactly. just coming to that. So for I all those who wonder what OTG is, yeah. it is organic terrace gardening. As RP says, it's not oven toaster and grill. Uh, it is, oh, grill. Uh, we, we I got that wrong. Yeah. <laughs> We, we bake different kinds of things, uh, you know. <laughs> so yeah. it's uh, under you the sun that we can bake the... to grow some food. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's still related <laughs> to food, so we are good. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So you're in, uh, you're in the same category. You're right there. Just yeah. Almost. So it's a it's a Facebook group. We are on Facebook Live, and it is a Facebook group. And uh, how many? Twenty thousand, twenty-five thousand. How many members do Up we have? Out of thirty-seven thousand. Uh, Thirty-seven thousand. Thirty-seven plus. Latest. Okay, Vani has um, frozen. Yeah. I think. yeah, so I can maybe I can. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, it's yeah. now at thirty-seven thousand and growing. So, and uh, what oh, what wow. is also um, one of the learnings? Okay, that I also want to share that uh, OTG started as a platform primarily garden growers. I I remember we were, uh, uh, you know, at at a, for a very long time we were less than. 1000 2000 members and then suddenly there was a influx when um, i think there was quite some uh, you know understanding through media through I, I think there were several incidents and then suddenly all of us i think the growth from 10000 to 25000 was you know in a matter of time so it was much much faster and i think uh, one other uh, and it's not just bangalore now it's global right we have members from every i think every part of the world uh, everyone sharing and you learn so much based on each person's experience, right? Yeah. And, and even within Bangalore, I could be, you know, I stay in North Bangalore, Hari is in the South. We, we are completely different microclimates, right? So there's so much mm -hmm. to learn from what people experience. Wow. Mm -hmm. And that also set off, you know, the, the way these movements really take off, it's, it's all self-governed. So you mm -hmm. then had a lot of these uh, area groups that started uh, so that people could meet uh, you know, over the weekend, people could uh, exchange, uh, you know, live, uh, interact with each other, exchange seeds, saplings. And, um, you know, th th that's how that forum has really grown. It's spread it's so much of best practice sharing. Uh, and I think as social media tools has also evolved, a lot of the activity from uh, Facebook has also expanded into WhatsApp. 
uh, it's lovely to see so many gardeners have their YouTube channels now, right? So, and it's a, it's a, I think that's the support that, you know, the original platform gave people to be able to take it forward, whichever way worked, right? Yeah. It's not about, uh, this is the only expert group or that's the only expert group. The point is just everybody just grow, right? Yeah, Share, sharing leads to learning and that's so, where they grow. Everybody has to uh, So both of you are admins on the platform. Before I give the uh, RT uh, few questions to uh, shoot, uh, both of you admins, uh, so it's a closed group. A lot of people keep asking me, can we join and all that. So what are the challenges? How do you maintain the, you know, the decorum in the group and what it takes to, you know, maintain that? Sure. How do you want to go first? Yeah. Um... I think uh, it's quite, it's, uh, to be, uh, to put it uh, frankly, uh, uh, Vani, it's quite challenging. Okay, so somebody has to uh, be a watchdog always, okay, and to see the relevant content is yeah. getting uh, shared or uh, exchanged in this group because the entire uh, 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 aim of keeping this group together is to talk about growing food. We are talking about food here. I mean, I can just again, let me re-emphasize growing food. I mean, yeah. yes, ornamentals are there and uh, sometimes here and there, but uh, we would like to control as much as possible to ensure we talk about growing food because that's the next movement that we are going to get into very soon. At least if not our generation, our next generation, our children are going to get into this uh, you know, phenomenon of growing their own food. So I think, uh, uh, yes, uh, the, the challenges are to maintain uh, uh, the group uh, to its uh, true intent. That is number one. Number two, uh, there is a, a demand for uh, joining this particular group and the scrutiny to do who should be part of it and who should not be part of it is also very important because we don't want unwanted people to step inside the group and start uh, you know, doing activities which are not uh, right. So yes. we have to check a lot of parameters when we approve a person. So we have a questionnaire, we see when this person has joined Facebook, we see some of the activities this person is doing in the Facebook. We see the friend list that this person has. Mm -hmm. Okay. And a lot of parameters we have to check each one. And today we have 400 plus requests pending. So that means it is a collective effort of all the admins. We should go through this entire process of, you know, scrutinizing people and then selecting the right people and then bringing them on board. So it is a kind of, you know, you may have a, some, uh, uh, you know, um, elderly lady just joined the Facebook yesterday. And she wants to do gardening, which is probably a very right profile on the Facebook. But unfortunately, we will not be able to accommodate uh, because we had incidents in the past, uh, you know, with such kind of a profiles. So unless there is a request or a recommendation by a different member saying, uh, mm. please add this particular member. So these are the parameters we have. So that's a, that's a big area to actually look at. You know, if somebody sits on the computer to just to do this job, it's a full time job. Okay, mm. so, <laughs> so <laughs> it's a, yeah. a full-time job to do it. So, yeah. that's, so that's that's my uh, view on uh, this. So, okay. Priya, over to you now. Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, over and above what Hari said, see, with every new, and I know, as he said, we have requests usually in the 500s and 1000s, sometimes a week, you know, we see 2500 and all. The, th the intent is not to, you know, dissuade anybody from growing. The intent is to keep the group safe for those who really want to grow, yeah. right? So there are a couple of them and, and safety is not just about, you know, regular social media safety and stalkers, not just that. If, with every new influx of members, right? You have people who distort the message. So you need to make sure that people are actually committed to growing food. And again, here I want to make sure that, you know, people understand growing food. I'm not only talking about going, growing your greens or growing your chilies. There are ornamentals, which are very medicinal, right? Which we'd encourage people to post. You need certain flowering plants because they're pollinators. Absolutely, we want them. We want people to share their knowledge about, you know, native medical, uh, you know, medicinal plants, about herbs that are lost. There are so many things we think are weeds, right? But they have tremendous nutritious or medic medical value. So we do want people to share those things. But when it starts becoming too much of, uh, you know, uh, only ornamentals or some something that's exotic, uh, you know, you bought it at a crazy price and now you want to protect it. This is not the group for that, right? There are plenty of groups for that. So that's really the intent. And uh, so one is this, you know, keeping that focus. The second thing is with, with a lot of new members, there is a transition that they make from growing using chemicals and pesticides, right? The, the uh, inorganic ones to organic. 
So in their enthusiasm to contribute, you see a lot of people, you know, they will start making recommendations and you have to remember that there is a community that is also new. So they don't know the difference between using a chemical pesticide versus any of our natural uh, pesticides, right? So those are also the things that we really have to make effort. And, and you know, we have a great team of moderators who really help us. Uh, you know, they keep an eye and, you know, the community itself is, you know, they uh, self-governing. People ensure they report posts. Uh, we, we also yes. don't encourage commercial behavior because we, you know, while we want, you know, small entrepreneurs to grow uh, and it's a great platform, this is not the place where you come in and start selling your stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. So this is, this is, you know, we had the Uta from Tota event where you can do those things, but we don't want people to get flooded by these kind of commercial postings, which takes away from the point of growth. Right. Mm-hmm. So those are some of the challenges we face as admins. And, you know, there are a lot of people who say, you know, my request is pending six months. But yeah, we, uh, but we do, you know, as soon as people reach out or, you know, somebody tells us this is the person we do try to, you know, speed it up as much as possible. Yeah. So, and um, I understand uh, the kind of challenges that both of you have to go through to maintain a group that has over 37,000 members. And now I'm a little hesitant to even ask you this next question, but I'm going to ask you anyway is that uh, in your OTG group, there is a certain demographic, there is a certain a set of people that are active and part of it, but there's a whole lot of other sets of people, people from my generation who are yes. no longer that active on Facebook. We use things like Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, etc. cetera. Uh, so do you see yourselves, uh, Priya, do you see yourself sort of hold a similar space or try to migrate or try to transition from your traditional Facebook uh, followers to yes. maybe an Instagram or uh, a WhatsApp or a, or a YouTube? Yeah. yeah. So as I was saying, you know, the uh, there are a lot of WhatsApp groups that got, uh, you know, there are, there are, again, you know, Hari and I are not the only experts. There's so many people, you know, with a great, uh, uh, you know, no, a lot of knowledge over the years. And there are so many, uh, you know, folks from the OTG, the, the you know, the OTG group uh, who were there very active before they run a lot of uh, you know whatsapp groups uh, area groups as i said so yes you know that transition to whatsapp happens uh, i personally do have an insta instagram account where i do post uh, as much as i can I'm, I'm also not very active on social media these days but i do try to put um, you know as much as i can uh, you know tips uh, you know what you can do you know very simply with what you have at home uh, and I think, you know, especially with this whole COVID situation, uh, you, even this event that we're doing now, I don't think we would have thought about it back in yeah. February. Right? Yeah. That even yeah. Yeah. So That's I think true. through the whole lockdown, we did so many live sessions uh, and it really helped. It challenged people to think, uh, you know, beyond one needing to go, uh, you know, find a nursery, get the soil, get this. So how can you grow what you have? What are the things you can do with, uh, you know, just on your, uh, just with a bottle of water and a mint cutting? Yes. Right? So many things that you, that you can do. Yeah. And of course, once the you know, situation opened up a bit, that, that community that, was, that suddenly realized they have the time and you know, they got uh, uh, you know, exposed to it, definitely I see them, there's a lot more interest on Instagram, especially uh, where you know, I get lots of questions on you know, how I can, um, you know, how, to, how to manage pests better, how to, how to work with uh, waste from my kitchen and so on. And of course, Vani, Ani has been putting up, uh, you know, fantastic posts every day, little, little, little bites of information, right, which uh, help people to get that journey started. So I think that is, uh, that, that's, that's tremendous. And that's the way, if that's the way we need to get people's attention, yes, we need to migrate. And uh, speaking of uh, capturing every kind of demographic, Hari, you're very uh, famous for, uh, you know, you started your journey with, uh, with your son who, who would not eat palak. And one of the key things that you use uh, to, you know, uh, take garner the attention of your son is through storytelling. And, you know, you've mixed gardening with storytelling. So can you tell us a little bit about your characters and how storytelling panned out in this entire gardening uh, system? <laughs> Okay, and uh, that, those were the crazy days, I can say, you know, uh, because uh, there's another uh, thing with my son was, uh, he was a prolific reader. I think he reads anything that comes in front of him, let it be newspaper cutting or anything that is there in front of him, he starts reading. So one way to get his attention was to get him hooked to the story. At the same time, see the pictures that I was capturing and tell him saying that uh, it takes time to grow food. Okay, so he used to literally wait for uh, the story to come out because he's interested in the story. 
okay and uh, and the story the characters are attached with the plant you know every plant has a name okay so i started telling these stories to him and uh, he was very young you know now he start laughing at the stories when i show him but that's a different thing you know, he is he's basically migrated to or rather now reading uh, books which are 500 pages now so <laughs> i thought i was writing is a few paragraphs uh, of uh, you know a little story to him to just to tell and uh, he started uh, so we started naming the plants first you know to to start with you know it's a crazy thing to do but uh, every plant had a name you know and uh, whenever we used to go uh, to the terrace to do gardening and uh, he used to you know generally talk to me saying that okay uh, uh, you know so and so Papia is doing this and she is not growing properly and etc so he, every plant had a name okay and that's how the story was built and uh, i i thought you know why not publish the stories in the same group where i was uh, part of so so i started publishing it probably assuming that it will probably help some some of the children so whoever parents who are gardeners i think probably they'll also start reading it and i think that's how it all you know uh, yeah uh, went viral in the group and uh, primarily a lot of people were interested in seeing through those pictures you know uh, uh, starting from the sea to you uh, know how much time it takes you know everybody wants to know how many days etc etc so each picture had number of days and etc so after 10 days after 15 days after 20 days and etc so that's a the stories were very personal to writing the stories was behind was my child so i was just trying to write it for him and then i started pushing the same stories uh, into the group as well so i think that's how that's how uh, probably i got attention as well for uh, you know for some people i was a storyteller for some people i was a gardener and uh, for my son i was just a father <laughs> who was waiting for the ne next story <laughs> yeah, so that's how it all started to, yeah but i think yeah. you know hari was the original documenter because everybody used to um, you know post uh, pictures i mean every, everyone was posting their uh, you know either their problems or their progress or the harvest so that was that was you know normal but uh, i think you know hari was the and, and there were a lot of word documents uh, you know that people started putting together collecting a lot of the information yeah. from posts and you know putting that uh, into one one place uh, you know and and we we, are, we still deal with a lot of the limits of you know the facebook group on how to get that information properly searched uh, but then when hari actually you know started to do that pictorial uh, you know stage by stage i think that also made it very real for people you know so the that effort really made it easy and you know when you saw that you know some a little tiny uh, you know brinjal seedling suddenly you know hari will post something where which has a brinjal from every node that was of course inspiring and and we have to remember that you know he used to do it in a little container 10 inch pots 12 inch pots so anybody can do it right that's yeah. and people yes. used at those day those times people used to think they needed a field to grow enough for their uh, you know family or they needed uh, you know massive space so i think what hari really did there was to demonstrate that yeah. all you need is this and a little care you will get this much so yeah that was, it that used was to be right. it used to be so exciting to you know uh, get his uh, stories out the day it comes yeah. out like we're all looking at it and getting mm -hmm. so inspired I mean, uh, it it was one of the amazing things on uh, OTG because he he has sense of humor. He he had drama in the stories. It was like a you know movie, <laughs> a Bollywood Bollywood movie that it Absolutely. used to be like. So, it, it, it There you so go, amazing. right? Just I look think, at that. Look at the amount of uh, you know brinjals you can grow in a little pot. If yeah. what is inspiring, if not this. yeah his growing series were some educative. At the same time, yeah. it was so interesting and. It, Captivates. You would want to grow only for that, you know, because of yes. the kind of uh, things. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Now coming to the uh, you know O F Y T. That is the uh, you know Uta from your Tota. Yes. So that's that's like a flagship event. So uh, uh, Priya Minakshi, would you tell about the O F Y T as a movement? Sure. Man, what, sure. What, you know, how did it start, and you know uh, what kind of uh, activities that happened there? Sure. So, uh, Garden City Farmers Trust is a is a trust uh, you know set up by Dr. Vishwanath and uh, uh, you know his his, uh, his group, and they have done fantastic pioneering service right not uh, to uh, for gardeners of Bangalore. 
So the Ultra from Tota event, as I said, is uh, you know it is one of the uh, activities from Garden City Farmers, where every quarter you bring together uh, you know any any element of gardening. So you have one space. It's a it's a event which happens in uh, you know some kind of ground or open space, an exhibition where uh, people can see uh, get you know get all their gardening inputs in one place. Whether they need soil, whether they need compost, they need seedlings, saplings. That was the a vision behind the event because you didn't really have um, you know that kind of uh, uh, play, uh, you know uh, single place to go and get all that you needed or to connect to people who uh, who had those as their business offerings right so that was the concept um, and then one of the other things that happened in Uta from Yotota was also to have a lot of uh, you know stalls and uh, demo sessions where you know people could uh, for example you know Vani you were uh, known for the you know uh, stall that would all teach everybody how to even start managing your waste how to uh, you know compost and and if, if we have a big community of composters uh, you know people who have some um, uh, you know ha have the uh, uh, intention to be more responsible with their waste today you of course you know played played a huge role in that Thank and you. and OFIT was one of those forums right where uh, you know you had people who saw it live it is one thing to you know do it in workshops it is one thing to you know actually see uh, you know anybody and everybody and people sometimes you know walk in, in into this kind of an exhibition they see a board so they don't come in with the intent but so many people got converted because of having such an event right that is that so composting was one one of the best events uh, you know that OFYT had as one of the workshops was uh, um, you know chinnarakai tota which is to you know have little gardeners so, so you register your child and they would get a you know complete two hour session with some of our you know fantastic uh, team you know otg members they would you know ensure that the children knew how to mix soil how to plant a seedling and then take it back home and nurture it so these are the kind of you know little things that made a huge uh, difference. Uh, you know, you would have of course uh, the biggest and most look forward to piece of it, which was the seed sharing, for which you know uh, I remember the days when you know we used to have an Excel sheet that used to run into pages with people updating what seeds they had to share, and you know this was the one event then that everyone looked forward to, uh, and of and that of course as I said that also expanded to a lot of weekend meetings locally, and uh, you know so that you didn't wait you know for a whole quarter. For the opportunity to meet people so i think uh, that is one of the you know the biggest um, contribute contributions from garden city farmers trust uh, you know to to spur that uh, you know sort of a revolution let's say right which yeah. brought people together made the connections yeah. opened up those avenues so for people who don't know what uta and thota is uta is food from yeah. your thota thota is your garden or yeah. wherever space that you're growing so it's like a the grow what you eat and eat what you grow have been our you yes. know kind of uh, exactly. mantra yeah yeah so Absolutely. and speaking of uh, speaking of grow what you eat and eat what you grow hari um, as a novice uh, gardener i mean i don't know anything about gardening and a lot of people who are watching may not know a lot about gardening so can you tell us uh, some brief things about how one can start an edible garden and what does an edible garden mean okay uh, See, my, my primary, when I started this entire journey in gardening, uh, I started uh, with the vision to have uh, some harvest happening every day. So I wanted to reach a stage where I, whenever I go to the terrace to grow some food, uh, you know, uh, when I take care of the plants and when I, when I start coming down back to the, the, the house and I should bring something home. You know, that was the aim that I had. And finally, I, I saved that, you know, almost for, uh, you know, for few years, I was bringing food, and uh, for a few months, I used it to, uh, you know, trouble my uh, neighbors by giving the vegetables which, uh, you know, where they, uh, you know, probably got fed up of, you know, because I had excess. <laughs> Many times I had excess, so I, I had to give it. Now, then, then, you know, uh, the, the whole concept of doing this, you know, the edible garden, uh, you will realize it uh, the moment you, you you see things that you are growing more than that you can consume. Okay, so that's that that when you realize that you're really growing food. Okay, and so example, you know, things like uh, uh, like for example, bottle guard. You know, uh, if there are four growing together you know, at any point of time, you know, you have to cut it out. For some point of time, you have to harvest, otherwise it's goes waste. So you have to cut all of them. You know, and then you realize that you have three. But typically, when you go to market, you buy one. Yeah. Okay. So what do you do with the rest? So so this this is how you realize that you are growing, uh, uh, you know, growing food. 
and for me edible garden is something that uh, you know uh, probably uh, uh, every pot when you look at it uh, it should fetch you something uh, you know uh, back to your kitchen uh-huh. okay and uh, it can be a leaf uh, vegetable or it can be uh, you know root vegetable or it can be <laughs> it can be any other variety so ideally speaking you should go back home with some kind of uh, food that that uh, you and your family can eat okay and uh, yes it is not the easy journey uh, to start with that's why i recommend people to start uh, any edible garden so you have to start really small you know don't don't do a big bang thing and set up the whole terrace and then start doing stuff you know there is a learning process even today uh, you will learn you know i learn every day you know it's not that every day uh, things grow successfully so you you also have failures you know as we recommend people master one at a time you know keep growing you know things you know grow in a small scale and then slowly start expanding your garden and make sure that most of the uh, you know thing that you keep yeah. it uh, in your garden are basically something that you can take it back onto your table yeah okay, okay. yes there are interests for uh, people to grow plants and ornamentals and etc but uh, my idea of edible garden is uh, that when you look at any pot in your uh, terrace yeah. i think uh, you should feel that yes this is getting ready for the table so if someone keen to start uh, their own edible garden wh- what is, what are some of the places or what is the one place where they can source things like seeds containers gardening equipment all of that is there a one stop shop where they can uh, source these things there are there are a lot of good uh, places in bangalore you know mm-hmm. uh, again uh, i do not want to name them but, uh, for purely for the reason it will become commercial again okay. yes uh, they can they can uh, check with me because i personally source it the one one place is probably is a uh, is a uh, lalbagh where you can go and uh, you can get everything there you know uh, more or less everything there but there are specialized uh, uh, outlets of people running uh, you know uh, small uh, entrepreneurs we have in otg they are all doing you know uh, brilliant and they all have i think uh, uh, they are more reliable than any uh, commercial uh, establishment that is there okay so i think we should depend probably on these people i think our uh, otg group uh, the organic terrace garden group also has a commercial page mm. so when anybody goes into that commercial page they will actually see it you know okay. there are there are quite a few established players uh, here and trustworthy people you know uh, in fact the area wise they are there so mm-hmm. you can go to source from them uh, in any which way yeah so uh, uh, dr vishnath always says that you know uh, before we start growing uh, we need to first harvest rain harvest then he said we have to compost and then only grow food so uh, minakshi uh, how important composting is uh, to growing food i know you compost your your with your kitchen waste how important is it and you know uh, uh, yeah should everybody every gardener should compost should i mean that's that's a question i'm asking is critical how else will you will you get the safest compost from your own kitchen garden your own kitchen fields right and um, okay so let's go back to why you there are two reasons people compost one is they have a true uh, you know understanding of the environmental reasons behind sending waste to the landfill uh, those are the people who have that that mindset there are people who want to grow a garden but not so sure about the other side the pe- both of them uh, you know the, the the folks who compost may not be growing the folks who are gardening may not be composting these two need to meet some point right so when you grow a, when you uh, um, you know compost the that is the richest possible nutrient you can have for your garden so to you know if people are looking for what is the best uh, source of uh, you know my my growing medium my soil the garden starts with the soil Right. right it is less about uh, you know uh, how much water you poured or you know uh, we, what exotic plant you got it's not about that it is about first ensuring you have the right soil and the fundamental for that is to compost right so it has the while there is the environmental uh, you know uh, awareness and the need to compost any gardener since we're talking gardening here to me 100% they should compost themselves because that is the beginning of the process right, right. and uh, using that in many ways you know either directly in your soil mix or you know as uh, top pressing or as uh, you know compost tea when you see the result of something that you saved from going into a landfill yeah. to bring back your own food that completes the cycle it's delightful right okay okay so we actually we are uh, running short of time so i'll move uh, very quickly on few yeah. questions uh, <laughs> you move from uh, terrace gardening to uh, uh, you grow on the ground right now 
Yes. Um, I moved from terrace gardening to a balcony gardening. Yes. So if we all are on a journey in different, probably finally we all want some space where we can, you know, be yes. self-sufficient and growing food. So how different is it, uh, you know, quickly uh, growing in uh, containers versus growing on the ground? It's a world of a difference. So when I first moved, um, at that point I, was, I had about 400 pots on a terrace. Uh, a lot of it was growing food and I thought I had cracked it. Um, and then, uh, you know, I moved uh, to, to a home where I had a backyard and, uh, you know, I thought I'm going to achieve everything. It took me two years to realize that, that uh, you know, <laughs> growing on the ground is a completely different ball game. You see, uh, you know, so much, so many um, uh, insects and, you know, um, I wouldn't even, I would just say insects, right? Not just pests. Things that you never even imagined existed. Um, you know, the, the the only thing you had to deal with in your terrace garden in a, in in the middle of the city was uh, you know the aphid or the mealy bug, which had very simple solutions. Now suddenly you are looking at you know the entire uh, gamut of you know all kinds of things that can happen. So that definitely was a was key learning. Um, and uh, you know the the other thing is also planning. Uh, so what is it? So what as to what Hari said, you know you go enthusiastic and you uh, for example I have two drumstick trees. As a result of which, I'm usually chasing people several times of the year to give them drumsticks, right? <laughs> so those are the things I wish, you know, you, I had known at that time. So it's learning every day, every year. And uh, it's also about just because you have ground, it doesn't mean you, you know, you just, uh, you, you cannot just grow without planning. You have to make sure that you have, you know, just enough that is good, good enough for your family's needs, plus sharing a bit with people you can access, especially now. Yeah times of COVID, right? So, and it's important to bring that diversity, uh, right. which in the, which is fundamental even in a terrace garden. But in the case of, uh, of the ground, you have to really be careful with how you manage, especially runoff. How do you ensure that your uh, input nutrition is maintained? So a lot of those, uh, you know, factors are there, which scale dramatically when you grow on the ground. So, uh, yeah. yeah, would you want to ask yeah, something? Sure. Uh, Priya, I wanted to ask you uh, this question is what, what according to you is the importance of eating local, regional and seasonal? Yes, so I think it's, uh, that's another topic. So when we say grow what you eat, eat what you grow. Yeah. I think, you know, as, as folks, uh, you know, living in urban uh, context, we are, we are very exposed to a lot of uh, a lot of our non-local food as well. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, yeah. right? It's uh, I, mean, I am I'm also a foodie. I also enjoy things. But what happens is, you know, as a gardener, when you start planning and you want to grow, uh, uh, grow, let's say, some exotic lettuce, and you know, your friend or cousin gifted it to you from the US or whatever, or any other country, uh, the, growing that lo non-local um, plant can be a challenge for some. Cannot be a challenge for, and maybe easy, right? But what happens is over time, you may, you know, to Hari's point, you grow that. After that, you don't know what to do with it because you don't consume yeah. salads on a yeah. daily basis. Okay, <laughs> So that's important. So why not grow your palak, grow amaranth, grow local greens. There's, you know, there's at least 53 types of greens that we have forgotten because, you know, even when we go into the, uh, you know, market, you typically see only three or four types, even by the cart sellers. Yeah. Right? So it's important to revive some of that and, and understand why those seasonal vegetables, why is some kind of green available more than something else in a certain season? Because it has certain properties. It helps you get through that season healthy, right? Yeah. Why are gods available in the monsoon? Why is it that you get carrots and uh, you know cabbage in the winter? So those are things that we need to spend some time. We, we, we're getting further and further away from our food uh, and, it's, and you know, it's, it's meaning to our health but we, as we become more foodies, yeah, right. So I think that's that's something we yeah. need to all step back and think. And you know, I think I think it'll normal. It'll just boost your immunity if you if you start thinking in terms of being local. Um, you know, consuming that safe food and and focusing on things that we have forgotten, but which are relevant to this region, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, that's so so important for all of us to understand that because. Uh, uh, I think uh, even when you look at the sustainability part of it, as long as we source it from the local farmers and, you know, yeah. people who are growing regional food, who grow with natural methods of farming, I think all these need to be kept in mind when you yeah. look at nutrition because the nutrition comes from 
uh, in you know that yes. exactly that route you know yes. the same route and uh, that's what we need to put into our bodies you know not food that is grown monocropping and you know grown off season or grown with lot of chemicals and fertilizers and pesticides so the whole movement of the organic terrace gardening is about safe food and uh, all of us are foodies so uh, uh, hari you have actually given me a lot of heirloom seeds so what is the difference between uh, a uh, hybrid seed and uh, heirloom seed why should people choose something that is natty and or heirloom but not be hybrid yeah i think that this is a technical question but uh, <laughs> <laughs> you want to pass that <laughs> <laughs> pass <laughs> uh, i just wanted to to my understanding you know uh, you cannot uh, uh, you know uh, continue the uh, life cycle of your plant from the seeds if it is not heirloom so if it is hybrid it's a property from two different plants you know a shiny black looking brinjal is basically shininess comes from one and color comes from one or probably taste comes from one and the looks come from one but uh, when you put that seed back it will carry the property of only one particular plant or may not be carrying any property at all so that is it very important that uh, you know we, we stick to heirloom seeds yeah you can experiment with hybrid and you can experiment with a lot of other things that are available but at the same time my suggestion would be to stick to the hybrid where uh, if you want to become a, a for me a, to become a sustainable garden gardener so i should stop buying seeds so how do i do that you know the only way to do it is start uh, your journey with heirloom seeds and uh, save some seeds and continue this is what the farmer does you know right. so at a large scale a uh, small scale you need just one tomato to you uh, know save it you know, out of uh, whatever you're getting it so, yeah. so i'm sure it is quite possible no good i mean uh, that's true because uh, we we learn only when we understand better right so uh, yeah. uh, uh, quickly meenakshi what are the challenges when it comes to gardening uh, you know there a lot of people keep asking questions about you know pests you know there are caterpillars there are ants there are rats that come and eat up my food so uh, how do we you know sync with nature and also take uh, yeah. give a couple of examples of you know what quickly you can how quickly or how well we can maintain uh, without uh, you know these as as a problem looking at these sure. as problem yeah sure sure so i think there are some um, you know there are some negotiables and non negotiables okay so having a rat or a bandicoot is definitely non negotiable you need to get it out of the of of your environment because it's they are toxic and they're not going to allow you to grow anything uh, people often have the problems of monkeys um so it i can understand the uh, uh, you know the frustration when you got something to a certain level and then one fine day you go there and everything is chewed off so those kind of things you know you need to understand your ecosystem uh, are these kind of uh, uh, events going to be possible ensure you take some kind of protective mechanism you know people people generally do cages or you know things like that so you need to do something like that uh but in case in case of the general pests right what happens is you know all of us when we start uh, and even as gar organic gardeners uh, the general uh, solution to everything is you know spray neem oil spray this spray that you know somehow get something done what you what people don't realize it um is that you know that same neem oil is also going to push your beneficial organisms away beneficial uh, you know mm. uh, insects away so at some point uh, you need to you know get into that ecosystem where you prevent uh, rather than manage okay and these are things which you can very easily do like even uh, if if you spend that 10 minutes with your plants every day you will you will find the first signs of an aphid attack you can manage it with water you are you some find the first mealy bug take care of it immediately right don't wait for it to take over your plant don't let a scale insect completely infest before you know you start running around with you know soap and you know shikakai water and this and that so many things you can manage if you simply pay attention throughout the cycle right and that will ensure that you don't uh you know spray a whole lot of things and then you're like suddenly wondering now why do i not have my beneficial insects inside why do i not have butterflies why are my bees not coming right so i think that's important it and then definitely there is also the question of the ecosystem that you're growing in your microclimate and your um uh, you know the space that you're growing somebody who is growing in a balcony or in a smaller terrace or you know in the middle of the city may seem far lesser uh you know pests or you know any of these infestations than someone who is living in a uh, you know different uh, different kind of an environment maybe more open spaces uh, both of both of them um, you know you need you need to first of all understand that climate and that that microclimate that system 
in the case of terrace gardeners uh, i think it it's very important that uh, you know i keep saying this you need to manage your real estate you need to manage your harvest right so you need to make sure that you get something productive out of that effort yeah. so that for so it's important that you do that prevention of of these pests uh, in in a timely manner rather than you know worry about uh, you know everything else that you need to do to eradicate them later once it's already happened yeah that's mm-hmm. important in the case of people who have that ability to build a big ecosystem you have a garden i mean even, even in the city right if you if you're in a house independent house and you have a garden around you you must ensure that you're growing you know a, a diverse set of you know pollinators non pollinator you know po- pollinating uh, you know plants things that attract birds attract the bees uh, predator insects so those are the things that you need to do to make sure that your overall crop harvest and garden yeah. is healthy that's yeah. very important mm-hmm. so uh, now uh, in fact uh, i if there was time there's so much more that we would want you all to i mean talk about uh, hari is an amazing cook he you know he, it is like a i don't like a therapy to just watch him uh, you know cook and you know finally eat it and you know everything is so it's so beautiful the way he he does the whole thing the corporate garden that he did in his office and yes. in his apartment you know the community gardening that he does there's so much to talk about you know and you you yourself minakshi an amazing cook you know very traditional at the same time very experimental and i wish we had more time to talk about uh, just uh, is is gardening therapeutic i mean to both of you we can actually uh, you know uh, with uh, i have we have four minutes then arthi can take over is it therapeutic i mean there is so much to talk but i just want you all to leave the audience with you know how therapeutic it is and what a meditative space to me it's a meditative space so yeah Yeah, go okay uh, okay i i'll just answer this uh, wow now, now tell me do you feel nice or not <laughs> yeah. this is the this is the size of this pot yeah absolutely that's all you need that's all you need that's you know? coriander and and i'm sure yeah this is coriander you yeah, want to add it's coriander without mud without chemicals easy just yeah. take it you don't even have to wash it Put it directly into your dishes, right? Yeah. Yes. In fact, you can eat it directly from the pot if you like yeah. to. Yeah. Eh? There's nobody going to see. <laughs> exactly. It. Uh, exactly. I you know it's it's an amazing feeling, Vani. Just to uh, give you, it's really it 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 takes you away completely from your uh, unrealistic world outside that you're going to go back and work and uh, work pressure and etc. So your garden will probably take away all that and gets complete attention from you, and you it it, it is you and the plant or your plants. That's all. so you it's a silent uh, communication that uh, your garden and you are going to have it and i'm sure that understanding is something uh, will probably be, you will carry back to your work and you start seeing people also around you in in the yeah. same way yeah. you know so that's the kind of a feeling it leaves you uh, when when you do when you do gardening uh, you start understanding things probably uh, much better than uh, you know uh, the, the usual you are yeah true 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 so true yeah <laughs> what about you Yeah. i think totally it's it's uh, you know being in um, uh, i've been you know working in the uh, corporate world for a while now that it has its stresses it has its joys but uh, there's no doubt that you know my 10 minutes 30 minutes whatever i get in the garden that's what keeps me going for the rest of the day and uh, you know for anybody if you if you do it along with your family uh, there is nothing more restful than that you know uh, both my husband arun and i we are always uh, you know we we work together in the garden that's the time we get to catch up there's uh, there's so much peace and i think uh, you know one absolutely it's therapeutic in terms of you know there's no distractions you don't multitask you don't have you know uh, the dig- digital drains that happen right so that way it's yeah. it's really good yeah. you are producing something that is tangible and healthy so that is great i think more than anything else uh, uh, you know it gives you perspective you you understand it's very humbling that you know in this whole space you know nature is so much bigger than all of us and i think that's the that's the most important lesson you get uh, you know as a gardener and it puts everything else in perspective you can handle it yeah right? yeah thank thank you so yeah. much uh, thank you so much priya and hari for being so generous with the knowledge that you have and i hope a lot of people are inspired to join the otg group or start their own organic terrace garden not oven toaster grill guys that i have to emphasize <laughs> this because i have had a very funny experience which i can tell for later about the center otg thing <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us and sharing all the information that you have um i hope uh, people who have tuned in um 
have been inspired and they go back and you know look at the food that they're eating is it safe where does it come from can i grow those foods um, and i hope you tune in the next week on the 24th uh, we're going to get some another uh, great set of speakers for next week which we will reveal uh, only in the next week so <laughs> thank great. you for having us pleasure uh, thank, you, thank, you. thank you thank you thank you for having me thank you hari and um, thank you thank you so much uh, it's thank always you so a pleasure to uh, interact with you guys uh, we miss because of covid we miss uh, getting together you know working in your garden eating your awesome food and you know uh, doing all the crazy we will we will too. soon yes uh, <laughs> yeah. hope we we'll all get together yes. soon yes. yeah Thank you everyone for tuning oh, in. Oh, I stopped the live. I stopped the live. Okay. Thank you. We'll still meet. So yeah. same thing. Yeah. Over.